A corruption probe in Turkey is sending shockwaves through the government. More than 50 people have been detained, some with high-level political connections. Our senior international correspondent, Ivan Watson, joins us now live from Istanbul. Uh, so, Ivan, what's the latest from the courtroom happenings and how high up does this go? It goes pretty high up, Charles, and the latest news is that a Turkish court has officially arrested 14 more people of those dozens who were detained uh, as part of this corruption probe, and they include the sons of the interior minister and the economy minister, as well as the head of the state-owned Hulk Bank. Now, uh, the allegations against them, much of this information is being leaked to uh, the Turkish media, and it refers often uh, in great detail to what appear to be uh, police wiretaps. We can't confirm the details of this, but the, the stories here are quite shocking, and they involve allegations that, that some of these people received shoeboxes full of cash from an Iranian businessman who was buying passports from the Turkish government. Of course, that will all have to wait until the trial itself, but this is certainly the talk uh, of the political classes here in Turkey. And what is remarkable about the Turkish government's reaction to this is the Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan, instead of uh, uh, perhaps you know, taking seriously the charges against close relatives of some of his most important cabinet ministers, he has claimed that this entire investigation is part of an international plot uh, that he says uh, has been carried out unconstitutionally. Uh, he's called this a dirty, dirty operation, and his government has gone one step further. It has fired, according to Turkish media reports, dozens of police commanders, including uh, removing from office uh, the head police chief here in Istanbul uh, in the hours after the first detentions took place. Uh, so he is standing very much by his ministers, by their families, despite of very serious, very serious allegations uh, against them and against their uh, their sons in this case, Charles. Yeah, it is. They're they're it's full of bizarre facts. I mean, you mentioned the shoe boxes with I understand four and a half million dollars of them in this uh, senior banker's home. Uh, you've got the uh, U.S. ambassador to Turkey resorting to Twitter in Turkish, uh, to, and he's having his say there, and the prime minister taking this strange stance on all this, as you pointed out. And what actually, as far as one can discern, is really behind all of this? Well, everybody here seems to be in agreement that there is a massive uh, power struggle underway between two factions that uh, have enjoyed being really in power in Turkey for much of the last decade. On the one hand, you have Erdogan and his Justice and Development Party, or AKP Party. On the other hand, you have the followers of uh, an exiled Turkish Muslim cleric who, of all places, lives uh, in a compound in Pennsylvania, the U.S. state of Pennsylvania. His name is Fatula Gulen. And the, the supporters of Erdogan have basically accused Gulen and uh, police commanders and prosecutors who seem to sympathize with him of being behind this corruption probe. Now, what's even more striking is the response that has come from Fatula Gulen within the last 24 hours, where he issued a sermon uh, on a web page that often uh, broadcasts his sermons. And in this, he really seems to go after the Turkish government against Erdogan himself. He basically calls for fire and brimstone, uh, saying, quote, you know, if, uh, if you don't, it, it, uh, let, let me get this properly. If you go after the people who are trying to catch the thief, if you don't see the murder but try to defame others by accusing innocent people, then, Gulen says, let God bring fire to their houses, ruin their homes, break their unity. So what you have here is two powerful men who worked closely together in the past who are now very visibly at war with each other, and it's left the rest of the country very much in shock. Uh, there seems to be no pretense right now of law and order or democracy. These are two uh, leaders whose followers are well entrenched in different branches of the Turkish government, and they're purging each other and going at each other, not only through the judiciary and the police and investigations and in speeches, but they're also using media, newspapers and TV stations that they control to smear each other. I've never seen anything like this in my 10 years in Turkey. Charles. Okay, I'm sure that one will run and run. Uh, Ivan Watson joining us there live from Istanbul.